Okay, I'm ready now. Let's go. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope you're all doing well and you're sufficiently caffeinated. Um, I am overly caffeinated, so if I'm talking too quickly, uh, I apologize. I'm happy to repeat anything that I say upon request. Uh, my name is RJ Thompson. I'm an assistant professor of graphic design at Youngstown State University. And I want to talk to you today about uh, the city of Youngstown. Um, and if you're on the Twitterverse, you can hashtag this at the city of you, and of course, hashtag UCDA. Uh, any all updates, photos, etc., are certainly appreciated. Um, this is actually uh, a really massive project for me, so um, I'm going to try to abbreviate some areas that are maybe too dry or too technical, so it's going to be fun from here on out. Um, Point of origin, we'll start with the EDA, Economic Development Association. Um, Youngstown State University received a two-year, $250,000 uh, federal economic development grant um, to conduct a significant amount of research on how to revitalize Youngstown from an economic perspective. Um, as part of that proposal, the university was obligated to produce a publication uh, with all of their findings. Myself and my Youngstown Design Works uh, program, which is a student-run graphic and interactive design agency, were commissioned to produce this publication aptly called The City of Youngstown Strategies for Economic Development. It's a title with a lot of personality. Um, like I said, Design Works was commissioned to do this work. Uh, it's a student-run agency. It involves our top-level senior students. They get about a year of professional experience before they graduate through this program, and it is highly selective. So the students that are participating in this program and worked on this project were uh, the absolute best of our program. So uh, we wrote out a quote for $8,000, and uh, through this grant we attained that full amount, and all that money went back into the Youngstown Design Works program, which affords our students more learning opportunities, purchase technology, so on and so forth. Voila! This is not something that we made. Uh, this is actually the State Seal of Ohio uh, that has been co-opted by Youngstown and actually a lot of other communities in the state. Uh, where they lack an identity, they just use this guy. Um, and everyone hates it. And speaking as a designer, looking at the, the files on a technical level, it's enough to make your head explode. Okay, so Youngstown has had no branding to speak of. And, uh, and the lack of an attractive brand presented many problems. The, the, the overarching theme here is that we could spend hours, days, years uh, producing a, a publication that details all of the things that we could do with economic development initiatives to try and bring this city back uh, to its former glory, which it won't be because steel mills in the area are gone. Um, but uh, all these things that they want to do, it won't necessarily matter without a cohesive voice, a singular voice. And um, we had this opportunity to innovate and to do so creatively. With this publication, we could actually give this town some spirit, all right? Give it a personality, give it a profile, and actually put some energy into these projects that uh, they wanted to implement. So, uh, settling for mediocrity was not part of the goal, and the branding campaign essentially came as an accident. So, uh, to segue from that for a few minutes, uh, I, didn't, I don't live in Youngstown. Uh, I didn't grow up there. Uh, I'm very much an outsider, even to those in the community that I work with. Uh, Closely, I'm an outsider, and instead of being, uh, you know, cast out, uh, it, it's the objectivity is appreciated. Um, they like the fact that someone from outside of their community is working on this campaign. Uh, the objectivity gives this campaign some authority, in a sense. If it were if it were completely homegrown, it would be very biased. So I like the fact that I'm the outsider looking in, and you know, I say here that. I'm still learning, and I am, even as this campaign has been uh, thoroughly developed. Despite the fact that I don't live here in Youngstown, I am 100% committed to this city and the people that live there. 
Um, I grew up in a very, very small town. I had bears in my backyard in the middle of the Allegheny National Forest. Uh, these are my people. I know where they're coming from. Um, and if I didn't work in Youngstown, if I didn't work at the university, I would still be just as committed. As a graphic designer, um, we can each look at our respective careers and find that one project that we always wanted to do. And I grew up with Legos, building Lego cities, Sim City, all right? I wanted to rebrand a community. I wanted to give a community its visual soul. And I've been able to do that through this campaign. And I can think of nothing more exciting other than uh, maybe doing it for a, a much, much larger major metro uh, city. Let's say Boston. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but ultimately, you can't rebrand a community you don't care about, even if you don't live there. Um, and you can't rebrand a community that you don't love. And I don't live there. I spend a lot of time there, though. And I love the place, and I love the people. And there are great people in Youngstown doing great things. Uh, not just building programs or uh, creating nonprofits. I mean, people are inventing technologies. 3D printing, additive manufacturing, the home of that is in Youngstown, Ohio. Um, there are at least two dozen different 3D printing companies building 3D printers that you're using in your classrooms. They're innovating this technology. So the future of Youngstown is in its people and what they're creating. And that's one of the, that's a nexus point I really wanted to uh, convey. So, every single person in Youngstown has a story, and that's one thing that uh, this campaign is something that I want, I really want to share. More importantly, what they're building. Uh, and that building is contagious. Um, yes, they're building technology, they're resurrecting the arts culture. The arts culture in Youngstown is amazing. Uh, outside looking in, you wouldn't necessarily think that to be the case, but there are more galleries popping up. There are organizations that are dedicated to using arts as a fundamental learning tool um, for anyone of any age, race, creed, gender, etc. So, building things in Youngstown can be challenging, but it's contagious, and this campaign articulates that. Because Youngstown is a city in revival, the opportunity to do really anything that you want is more accessible. It's easier here because they want it. They're willing to work to make your dreams happen. You want to start a design agency? Done. Go to the Youngstown Business Incubator. They'll hook you up. You get, a, you get startup funds. You get free office space. There. That's it. Um, I live in Pittsburgh. I taught at larger schools. The types of things that I wanted to do, if I didn't do them in Youngstown, they would take well over five years to do. Even starting this student-run design agency, it wouldn't happen in a year. It would take several years. So, I created the City View campaign in one of the least likely, strangest uh, places to be on a weekend. A uh, doctor's office waiting for my wife to finish up her uh, pregnancy blood tests. Uh, Saturday morning at 7 a.m., I'm sitting in a doctor's office, and I really got to thinking about, um, you know, what makes Youngstown Youngstown? It's people. It's people are its essence. It's life force. Metaphors being what they are, oh, look, how apt, blood, our life force, our essence, so on and so forth. And uh, that's really where it, it, it came to be. And uh, here's the alpha, all right? This is, and, and I refer to it as the alpha. This is the primary mark for uh, the city now. Uh, and I'll get into the process behind getting this implemented in a moment. Uh, as you can see, if you cover this up, how apt, the city of view. Youngstown, Ohio. The narrative, short, simple, to the point. Um, read into it a little bit more. It tells a story. It tells a story of what? Well, a city of people similar to us that are doing great things, hopefully. Here's the beta. This is the campaign narrative logo. This is the logo that is really going to be used in the advertising. The city of you, Youngstown, Ohio, it says the same things as this does, except 
This is going to go on government stationery, business cards, uh, letterheads, envelopes, so on and so forth. This has a little bit more variety to it. It's a bit more playful. Departmental branding. The mayor's using it. The other departments are using it. There are actually over 50 different departments in city government, all of which will have um, this logo. Now, the funny thing about this is the first actual implementation of this logo is going on the sides of their garbage trucks. Uh, so I hope people like the logo and don't think it's garbage. Some of the neighborhoods in Youngstown already have brands, uh, particularly the neighborhood associations. Uh, they've actually commissioned my students to do these two logos. Um, but one thing I want you to pay particular attention to is the, the color variation. All right, so we're able to use alpha with the name of the neighborhood. So every neighborhood in Youngstown can have its own distinct branded identity. On top of the fact that this also works with what has been established. Now, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the opinion of the campaign, or myself as the director of it, that you know, we don't override this. This is important, it has personality, it was created for, by, and within the community, and we don't want to say, well, just because we have this now doesn't mean you can't use that. So, some other variations on a theme. Color diversity. The mayor was very, very explicit with me in that I don't want this to be red, white, and blue patriotic America. Um, Youngstown has a wide variety of, of people uh, from all different walks of life, a lot of which are transplants, um, a lot of which actually are people that left and came back because, yes, their family's there, but more importantly, they believed in the future that, that Youngstown is. And I don't say that to be like very idealistic. They actually see what's going on and they're attracted to come back. There was one particular person who was living in New York City for 25 years and they saw what's going on in, in Youngstown. They're like, I'm coming back. She did, she started her own yoga studio and now uh, you know, she's got a yoga studio in Youngstown and everyone loves it. Some variations on a theme here with the neighborhood branding, so we can use these different treatments. Now the colors aren't set in stone, so if you see some ugly color schemes, don't judge me, all right? <laughs> it's okay. Um, this is intended to demonstrate the versatility. All right, so uh, rounds one and two. Uh, this is These are the first two iterations of the advertising. Now. It's okay if you don't like them. It's, in fact, I, I welcome the criticism. It's not perfect. One thing that I need to make explicitly clear is that we aren't trying to craft some advertising that's going to revolutionize design and advertising industries or the discipline. Barrier for entry needs to be accessible. Uh, it needs to be accessible to people of all walks of life, including those that can't read or are colorblind, uh, or our heart of vision, so on and so forth. So here's the first one, I can in Youngstown. This is uh, David Pokrivnak, a friend of mine and a creative in Youngstown, and he's doing a lot of different things. Uh, particularly, he started something called the Little Youngstown Cinema. And it's just a cinema house in the basement of an apartment building, and they play indie and art house flicks. And that's it. Uh, it's really cool, it's very niche, but he does so much more than that. I can play live music, start a record label, go on tour, build an indie cinema, and be a dad in Youngstown, the city of you. There's the narrative, the generation of content, it comes from them. We don't have to work for it, it's easy, it's there, it's in their stories. This is the, the second version. Simplifying these things, maybe making a bit more aesthetically driven, simplifying the narrative, um, I can run garden lead in Youngstown. Person's name, occupation, build your best self in the city of view. This idea of, of building things in Youngstown, manufacturing not just things and technologies, but also this idealized self-concept uh, is particularly important. Um, second one, I can innovate automotive technologies. And then the third one, that's Jared, um, African-American. 
Asian American, LGBTQ. Um, not just race, but all manner of diversity. It's fully inclusive. So, the pitch. Seeking the mayor's approval. Um, surprising the mayor with a rebranding effort, uh, drawn out of an, of an approved publication design, uh, was interesting. The mayor was expecting a book. He got a book, but he also got a lot more. Um, one of the... <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. I guess I should pay attention to my slides, but um, the mayor did not anticipate a rebranding effort. So this blew up very, very quickly. Um, and I've given this presentation, or rather variations thereof, many, many, many times, not just to the mayor, but to city council and so many other parties. Um, the process of even getting this logo to be considered to be used was very long, drawn out, and well over uh, a year in the making. Focus groups and user testing. So I pitched the mayor, I pitched his staff, they were interested, they were intrigued, they wanted to uh, explore this concept out. After all, they didn't have to pay for it. So one, they're saving money. Two, uh, and I say this without being egotistical, so please don't take it that way, they got a good idea at least relative to what they didn't have, okay? So we needed, to, we needed to do some user testing and some focus groups. So this included me speaking at libraries to citizen leaders, uh, people of reputation in the city, uh, be they business leaders or nonprofit leaders, neighborhood groups, etc. And we did two focus groups, um, and everyone seemed to like the work. Now keep in mind, these focus groups did not have designers in them. So, I had to be very objective in the types of feedback that I was getting. Um, no one critiqued the design, not that I anticipated that. I would have welcomed it, but that did not happen. Instead, they talked about, well, we want to see more diversity in race. We want to see more women, more uh, African Americans. We want to see uh, some of the really underrepresented folks in our community, particularly uh, you know, poor folks. And, that was always a part of the goal, but it's good to get that reaffirming feedback. So, moving forward. All right, community trust and approval. So, um, I made these shirts, I financed them, and I did not seek anyone's permission uh, to make these. Now, uh, the context behind this particular event. Um, as part of the Economic Development Grant, a group was created called the Economic Action Group. And this basically involves all the community uh, business leaders. And at this particular event, I had to be there to present the City of You campaign to everyone. The shirts were there to close the deal, to close the pitch. However, this day was full of, of strife. In that, um, this morning, my wife woke up at 4 a.m. and her gallbladder exploded. So I rushed her to the hospital. My presentation was at 9 a.m. We got to the hospital like 4.30 in the morning. She was in the operating room by 6 a.m. I Timeline is fuzzy. I sat in the parking lot of the hospital and recorded a presentation, because I couldn't see her, there was nothing I could do. I sat in a very hot SUV in the morning, recorded not only my entire pitch on my laptop, but also the pitch for the websites that we were doing as well. Got them both uploaded to Dropbox. Then my people in Youngstown were able to download those and miraculously get a computer and speakers, set it up for an audience of 100 people, and we were able to get that presentation off and running, and I wasn't there. Um, it went very well, fortunately. Uh, even though all the white hair you see, it came from that particular event. Um, but uh, these t-shirts were a really big hit. I had people coming to me saying, I want one. I had businesses saying, I want this design, but I want a brown shirt, and I want to put my logo on the back because I run a coffee shop. So now the buy-in is easy. It's accessible. So, budgets. 
Uh, keep in mind, my role here is as the director of this program, but also as a professor of graphic design. I'm not being hired as a chief marketing officer for the city. They're asking me, the mayor is asking me directly, I need you to make a budget for this. Okay, well, how much are we working with? Just make a budget, all right? Um, $100,000. Spec'd it all out as best as I could. And uh, I submitted it. After several months, some back and forth, trial and error, uh, I had to do a presentation for the mayor saying this is how we're going to spend this money, build out all of the strategy. And then after that, it had to go to city council. So one of the things that I'm learning here with rebranding a community is just how steeped in politics I am now. Uh, because I don't want to offend certain groups. I want to make everyone happy and make sure this project goes off without a hitch. Um, and we were able to make it happen. So throughout this process, uh, I made a lot of great friends. Um, and my passion for the city is, is evident, I hope, to even you folks. Um, this isn't a project for me, it's a mission. This branding campaign was meant to last for 20 years. Hopefully we'll get that. Um, we got the first $100,000, full approval, work begins, $100,000, and I went through a lot. On top of teaching and personal issues and God only knows what else, um, just as I feel as it becomes manageable, it keeps growing and growing and growing. So, our faculty doing a budget for a city uh, slash county slash statewide ad campaign, a unique enough experience. Um, we got the $100,000. It was approved by city council. City council members are coming to me now saying, oh, I need you to do this and go to this place, so now I have more bosses. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy to do it because their enthusiasm is directly proportional to mine. Uh, so it's good to have these teammates. Now, the exciting part. There should be another zero there. Um, National Endowment of the Arts, our town grant, through this City of You lens, we were able to draft a grant for the Our Town grant. We asked for $200,000. We received $100,000 on top of another $100,000 matching. So we have $100,000 from community businesses in Youngstown invested. We have the NEA money and we have the city budget. $300,000 to work with this. Uh, insane. First grant I've ever written, $100,000. Um, this award is among the largest of 64 uh, grants out of 250 applicants, so only 64 out of 250 received money. Pittsburgh got the full $200,000. One of the things that's great about this is, are the things that it's going to enable us to do, particularly tell the stories of the people in Youngstown. Um, and I'll get to that momentarily. This is uh, the cover of the book that we developed for the Economic Development, uh, uh, Economic Development Administration. Excuse me. I'm a big slab serif guy. If you have my business card, you'll see that. Um, one of the things that's important about the slab serif is if you look at Cleveland, Cincinnati, uh, they use different typefaces. Youngstown primarily is using the slab serif because we're a city of workers, we're a city of builders. We were in the past, we are in the present, we will be in the future. And this typeface exudes that personality. Some t-shirts being made. I was able to hire an alumni who started his own t-shirt printing company in Youngstown, and he produced these for us. Some mock-ups here, some color variations. So these could be uh, freestanding units in a place of commerce. Uh, these could be in different neighborhoods, so on and so forth. There is no, this is an airport, there's no airport that size in Youngstown. Don't get any ideas. Um, business cards. Ideally speaking, this is pressed into the card and it's got a thick stock with some tooth to it. The ads. So you saw the first two versions. This is generation three. This is where we're at now. So what we're doing is we're taking our subjects, photographing them. This is not a professional shoot. This is impromptu. It's authentic. This is what this person looks like every day. Um, and I shot this on uh, 
just this past Friday. So not only was I able to get a few shots of him, uh, but I was also able to record a podcast, get his story. He moved to Columbus for eight years and came back because he realized he could do the types of things he wanted to do with his life in Youngstown, ironically, the place where he grew up. So there's this vintage sort of feel to it, but it has a contemporary aesthetic to it uh, with the overlays. Here it just tells his story very briefly. This is going to be used in all manner of applications, be it a bus stop ad or on a billboard, who knows. Second one, uh, I actually went to her house um, and I did the same thing, recorded a podcast, took some photos, and uh, created this double exposure feel. She's actually a ballet dancer. Um, and one of the things that she's been wanting to do is start her own dance studio. and She's in the process of doing that now. Ironically, she just texted me and said, I really love the artwork, but I don't like how my hair looks and uh, my smile's too big. Um, sorry, deal with it. This is authenticity. I don't want to modify or doctor these photos any more than I have to. Uh, it's very important to me that I try to get the true essence of who these folks are. I love this texture, this layering. Uh, it, it's got color to it. It's, it's visible. You're going to see it in a manner of different places. And it's not that tried and true patriotic scheme that uh, other cities are using. You can listen to these podcasts online on SoundCloud. Or if you go to cityofyou.org, they are all listed there. Um, if you're interested in getting more information on this particular topic, I've done a few presentations on it, all of which are recorded, and certainly last longer than 30 minutes. So if you have some time to kill, uh, I would recommend you watch those, uh, or watch that and then uh, listen to these other ones. This uh, person here, Julius Oliver, he's a councilman. He started his podcast by basically saying, my father hated me. What an opening. Uh, and then he went on to talk about he went into the military, and then he started his own business in Youngstown, and then become a councilman. Just incredible stories. Working on the mobile app, which will feature a lot of uh, the podcast and video media that you can download for free. About 90% done on this. This is the cityofview.org campaign website as it is now. If you want to watch those presentations of that I recorded in the hospital parking lot, uh, they are on there as well. You can follow us on Twitter. And that is my presentations. I thank you for your time, and I'll take questions if you got them. Yes, go ahead. Um, you started off by saying that uh, you're working with a student-led design yes. uh, studio on this. Yep. Were they involved beyond the book? Not with the campaign ads. Um, they're involved in the website. They're involved in the app. So they're building the app, they're building the website, the interactive assets. They made the book, which is a 250 page book. Um, but I, I created the branding and the advertising concepts. Yes? How did you decide who to interview? Did you like cast your um, I want to I want to talk to everybody. Uh, some are more forthcoming than others. Uh, so I would say primarily I've interviewed the extroverts. Um, the introverts are a little bit more difficult to access. But a lot of these folks I knew personally, not super well, but well enough to be able to approach them. And then others, um, pardon me, others are, uh, were recommended. So we have a list of, I think in the grant for the NEA, we said we were going to interview a thousand people. That all falls on my shoulders. And I have a year to do it. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, getting that list from as many people as possible. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, by the way, great project. Just terrific that you're doing that for Youngstown. I, I, I love it. I, my question is, um, were you able to measure any of your results? Um, like, for example, did you see an increase in economic business? I mean, what, how did you measure the, your success? Great question. And I apologize for not detailing that. So this campaign hasn't officially launched. 
Um, officially, this is going to launch probably in the second week of August. Um, mostly because that $100,000, um, I needed to secure a few things first. Primarily, if I'm going to be doing all this work, I need to get a course release time. So I had to spend a lot of time negotiating course releases. So I got out of two classes for the entire year. So I have a, I have a two, 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 basically. Um, so I had to negotiate that. Second to that, um, I need to make sure that the university gets the money from the city. So I'm sitting in contract negotiations with the city and the university, a place a faculty member really shouldn't be, but there I am. Um, after that, the, the NEA grant actually kicks in in August. So we're doing a bit of work to front end that. Uh, the McDonough Museum of Art is fronting a lot of those costs. So all of these different channels are just going to converge at one point, and that's in mid-August, shortly before the fall semester begins. Um, so right now, uh, the, the means of, of tracking the analytics, we can measure social media very easily. Uh, we can measure website hits, email blasts, things like that. Um, even, even on the podcast, we can track uh, how many downloads, the app, how many downloads. Um, the, the printed work is not going to be as easy to track. Um, and that's just par for the course. So um, I will let you know what those numbers look like. And I, sh I, I certainly hope that they're positive. Um, right now, we're kind of in this slow launch where I need to be producing things and making them public uh, to get people aware that this is going to happen. And what that's really doing is rallying the troops uh, so that when this campaign does hit, all of the cheerleaders are in place to communicate that at one time. Yes? Uh, I think she also was asking, you said, was the economic development a partner with this initially? Uh, initially, yes. Um, so, would they have statistics of how many businesses they have now and after your campaign launches? How many people move there? Sort of like the stories, move there, mm -hmm. open a business, start a family. Yes. Type of metrics. Are they going to measure that? So, they have pre launch metrics. They have all of that in just an overwhelming yeah. amount of data. Oh, yeah. um, post launch, I think what they'll do is they'll measure that quarterly. A lot of that is tethered to the ability of City Hall to produce that data, which is not exactly easy. Um, so there's going to be a lot of speculative forecasting until that is verified. Yeah. But yeah, they... they but that would be the vehicle for mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate it. And uh, I have cards up here if you'd like some. Call, text, email on the grid all the time. Happy to take questions. Or if you want to rebrand your community, I've been there. I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. Yeah, Are we'll you presenting that. today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you. Happy to.